Welcome back to our video modules on statics. Now thus far we've been making a huge assumption. We've been making the assumption that everything is weightless and frictionless unless I give you the friction. We've, we've just been making some assumptions. I want to take one of those off the table. So if you remember a while back we looked at a seesaw. Let's say it looks something like this. We're looking at the seesaw and uh, one of the things I explicitly said to you at the time is we're going to pretend like the seesaw is weightless. It doesn't influence anything. And in the same way I went down here and I took a look at this uh, this this um, beam and I said these are your forces. Your force the hinge, your mass, your your you know these other forces and we summed it as a torque but I said that the mass of the beam we're going to neglect it. Well we know that there's that it has mass. We know that it's there but we took it out because it just made things a little too complex. Let's get this stuff off. Let's get this off the um, whatever off the desk. And let's revisit the idea. How do we think about mass on objects? First, I want to I want to a good exercise for that is let's imagine you know the NBA finals are going on right now. It's the and uh, the Heat and the Spurs. And it's, it's fun to watch. It's a good game. It's coming down to, I think, game six tomorrow. And, uh, all right, so I'm a bad drawer. I'm not, I'm not too good at some of this stuff. But let's take, we, say we take a basketball. And we put that basketball in, like, the specially designed, like, foam case that kind of holds it, all right? And it's going to wrap around the basketball, and there's going to be force. Well, let, let's say it's just, it's not pushing in on it. Uh, you know, force is going up, and the weight of the basketball is somewhat distributed. It's like in a little cradle. Well, just as easily, I could take this basketball, and I could put it on a table. Whoops. And when I put it on a table, something's going to happen. If that basketball weighs, you know, I don't know, like five pounds, here, it, that, those five pounds are going to be distributed all around the sphere. But if I put it on a table, there's going to be five pounds at one point. And that one point is going to be in the center. This point, or I should say, um, this force, five pounds, it's the same, same force, is operating through the center of the ball. At the center of it, it's an idea that we see all the time. We're going to call this the center of gravity. Center of gravity. This is the point where if we are only applying the force in one place, we're going to apply it straight through the center and it's going to hold the whole thing up. You've probably done this before. Imagine a ruler. You have a couple options. You could put it on a table, hold it up in like 10 places, or you find that one space where it's all balanced, right here, right in the center. That's, the, that's going through the center of gravity. In fact, the center of gravity is probably right about here. Um, we can get a feel for this, which is what we're going to do today. Just get an intuitive feel of it by just thinking about it when we see things. Let's imagine we have a triangle like this. Okay, see how it's it's symmetrical on both sides? We know that we could hold it up by applying the arrow right in the center. We don't know where exactly the, air, the center of gravity is because we don't know how high up it is, but you get the idea here. However, if we were to do something like an equilateral triangle, now take a look at what we can do. All right, we know one way, uh, one center is like this. We know that the center of gravity, you've got to push straight up here. There's our center, symmetrical. You can also cock your head, and you can see that there's another way we could support it. Push this way. Well, let's look at where they meet. We know that the place we need to find it has to be true for this symmetry and this symmetry. Well, okay, there it is, in the middle. The same is true up here at our ruler. Let's take a look at this. We have this is right in the center, 
and then we also you know we said it's a ruler well they're pretty rectangular right through the center is going to be another way of symmetry another axis the center of gravity will always be along those axes of symmetry uh, finally one example I had was this weekend I was building a deck and I used like these I-beams to hold the deck off of the house whoops hold the oh that's unfortunate I use these I-beams to hold the deck off of the house uh, to eliminate water damage and an I-beam is an interesting you know engineering tool but we can also see the center of gravity there it is right and left now top and bottom perfectly symmetrical there you have it one final item that I'm gonna tell you um, if we're dealing with homogeneous material or materials that are consistent like plane all throughout the center of gravity we refer to it as the centroid the centroid and that's how I will be talking about it by default going forward if we start dealing with materials that um, that, that change like maybe they're denser on one side and 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 um, and lighter on the other then I'll go back to using center of gravity but we use centroid when um, when we're dealing with homogeneous material that's that's just one OUS that does uh, not look right but I will correct it here let, let me look it up for a second let me figure this out sorry about that that was uh, why my daughter went to the county spelling bee and I did not there we go homogeneous um, join us on our next video when we look more at the definition of the center of gravity rather than just the concept I look forward to seeing you then